Hello there, audience. <laughs> I closed my eyes and then you were all there. So, um, uh, you're witnessing um, a truly supernatural evening because supernatural effects are the only conceivable explanation for the amount of technical trouble we've been having. Uh, I, uh, it's truly beyond anything I've ever experienced before. Um, so, uh, a lot of, I don't really know what's going to work tonight. And a lot of stuff just hasn't. And I, I really don't understand it. Um, back in the old days when I, uh, I used to have a company, some of you probably know about in California, that made the first virtual reality stuff. If I ever got in a bad mood, all the computers would crash. And it happened so much that I started to believe there was actually a cause and effect. Now, I'm actually sort of a scientist person. I always dismiss new agey things and superstition. And I always tell people, never to get superstitious, never to confuse superstition with uh, spirituality and all that. But I'll tell you, uh, tonight I'm superstitious. I just don't understand what's going on here. But... Um, Hail Paul. Hail, uh, Hail Bob, the comet, right. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so I'm going to do... Well, I'll just, I'll just start trying a few things. Oh, well, here's what I brought. I've been, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, various kinds of interactive devices, various sorts of sensors, hooked up to virtual reality sorts of machines, controlled by musical instruments, controlling musical instruments, coming up with new stage ideas that uh, combine performance and virtual reality. Now, um, boy, you might wonder what that guy is. Oh, I didn't realize he's still up there. Here, I'll, 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 put him, I'll send him his life and you can see what he does. This is a guy named Slinky. Oh. Stage life. Okay. Now, are we getting both channels now? Maybe? <laughs> Alright. Point the camera a little bit so that you lose the line on the right. Oh! Ah. Yeah, oh yeah, you also notice we have this, this uh, ultra sophisticated method of getting an image up on the screen, which is <laughs> don't, don't even ask. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm going to play a note on the synthesizer and watch Mr. Slinky. Ah. Response. So, this is an example. This is an example of, uh, of sort of uh, music controlled animation. <coughs> ah, so, um. so, let me show you another example. I started making these things uh, last year, and then um, this is a really fun one. Uh, I'm tempted to ask you all, do you, do you believe in prayer in Holland? Would you pray for my computers? <laughs> I just have like, a lot of good energy to make these things work. Was there any sound coming out of that? It's good? Oh, no. ah. Okay, so, um, how many of you have heard of the American Senators Jesse Helms, Newt Gingrich? Yeah. You know who Kathy Cannon is? Okay, well, um, this is a this is a, a virtual reality puppet that's an amalgam of all of them. And he's controlled by um, he's controlled by what I play on the keyboard. And according to which chords I can ch I choose, I can cause a flock of birds to shit on him. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate his face and cause him to be shit upon. And then by activating certain magic chords. I will cause his eyes to pop out, horns to grow in the head. I will cause him to get red with anger, and then I will cause him to turn around and re reveal his other face, which is known as Pig Newton. <laughs>
<laughs> so, <laughs> and then, um, can you see that okay? Can you see him? Here, let's bring him closer. Come up, come up, come up, come up. There he is. Sort of. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm going to play um, a long meditative thing for a little bit here. Um, I, I study Indian music, uh, which is based on a system of a melody moving against a drone. And um, I built this drone that listens to the melody and changes in some ways according to it. So it's essentially just a repeating sound, but if you listen to the structure, it's reformulating itself according to what I play. Uh, so this is um, going to be played on an Irish flute.
Raga. I'm almost tempted to suggest you don't applause because it might upset the equipment tonight.
the history of human beings, the most advanced technology, so far as I can tell, was found in musical instruments. Um, this is one. This was the most te advanced technology, really, of its day. But there are many other examples. And the reason I mention this is because um, when I try to explore this world of music and technology together, um, I view it as having an extra significance at this particular point in time. And I want to explain it to you. Um, for many years, um, there's been a uh, sort of a defamation against musicians, and it goes like this. It says, uh, the military invents new technology, and then musicians adapt it. Well, it's not true. Musicians invent the technology, and the military steals it. It's been true for centuries. I can give you so many examples. For one thing, uh, at the beginning, musical bows seemed to have existed before bows and arrows. But more recently than that, the cannon actually started out as a bell that was turned up, right? And, um, and uh, well, many other examples. Virtual reality, I mentioned one of the people who started with a fellow named Link. The other one was Leon Theremin, who was a musical instrument builder. Um, who also invented television, but isn't acknowledged for it. But we can forgive him that, because <laughs> he did some other good things. And um, uh, I find this extremely significant, because for one thing, it gives us a little bit of good news about human nature. It tells us that for all of these years, people have actually been able to be smarter when they're trying to make strange sounds and when they're trying to kill each other. That's an amazing thing. It's a sign for hope. And um, it also suggests, I think, a way out of what I perceive as a current crisis. So here's the crisis. Um, starting in maybe the Renaissance or maybe ancient Greece, depending on which way you want to interpret it, we in the West started a methodical project of making technology better and better. And our method is called empiricism, where we test ideas instead of just believing them. So applying empirical method, I, I have no explanation for why so many things broke this tonight, but in general it works. And uh, uh, we've gotten, we were originally motivated to do this for a very specific reason. Originally, uh, we were scared of nature. We remembered the great plagues that had devastated Europe. And we wanted to become more powerful. We wanted to be protected from nature. So we started making more and more technology. And what happened in the 20th century was that we had succeeded so well that we could say nature was no longer our problem. Our primary problem became human behavior. We became powerful enough that we replaced nature as our enemy. So of course, this came to a head with nuclear weapons. But the problem remains that we're still making new technology as if we need it. And the truth is, we usually don't need it anymore. There are just a few examples of making new technology for the original reason, because we, ha we, we have a reason to be scared of nature. For instance, if you're working on research for certain medical problems that aren't understood, like AIDS, or if you're working on ways to predict earthquakes, or keep dikes up, <laughs> all these things, these make sense, because we need to be pr protected from nature. But most of the stuff we do with technology, we're just doing automatically because we've come to love it. It's changed from something we need into something we love. All the stuff with computers and all the stuff with cars and all these things, we don't really need this stuff. It doesn't solve a problem. It's something that we do to express ourselves. So it's a form of art, really, but we don't admit it. So what I'm proposing is that we need to find a way to change our relationship with technology so that we choose to do technologies that are like art instead of oriented towards making us more powerful. Because eventually, if we keep on making ourselves more powerful, we'll kill ourselves one way or another, if not with nuclear weapons and biological ones or something. So um, one of the wonderful things about virtual reality is that it's a technology that got a lot of people very excited and yet, all it did was it changed people's experiences. It didn't actually do anything. It didn't send rockets up into space or anything. It just made experiences. So it changed, it made a change in orientation from power to experience. Um, I think we have to, and I mean that morally, we're, we're, we must 
inspire scientists and technologists to start making technologies like this, obviously better, <laughs> more, more reliable, but uh, we, have to inspire, we have to inspire the world of science and technology to become like art, and, and the reason why is survival. Art has a purpose now. We didn't used to know exactly what art was for, but now we do. It's to distract us from mass suicide. So, uh, so um, this, to, to me, all of this work with, with technology and art together is deadly serious. It's part of a project of changing the overall myth of our culture, the thing that drives us, so we just don't go on autopilot towards destruction. Um, I hope that's clear. It's as clear as I know how to make it. So, um, with that in mind, I'll, uh, I'll try the next little technical thing and see if it works or not.
Well, you know, Jenny, she, that's about all the tech stuff that's working tonight. Um, really, it's on the road. I should tell you that. The, the art of audience manipulation is to make them believe that they got more than, you know, but I'm too honest to really be a good manipulator, so i just tell you you got screwed tonight. But um, I wonder if I can try it now. Well, I'm just going to play the piano for a bit because it's reliable. It's a wonderful technology. So <laughs> it's a great thing. I guess hmm, the light points the wrong way. Okay, I'll play piano in the dark. <laughs>
continue, you know, it's, it, it, um, I'm just sharing this moment with you that I really don't know what to do since all this stuff didn't work. And I have, I'm going to play another How about coffee? What? How about coffee break? Oh, uh, coffee break. No, I'm going to go straight on through to the conclusion. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to play another flute for you. This is a marvelous pre-European European flute. It's a, from the Lap people. It's called a Seja Flota. Um, I, 
I think as far as the cat goes, honestly, there's really nothing else I can do tonight that's going to work. I mean, I'd love to play some more acoustic music for you guys if you want to hear some more music, because I just adore doing that. Do you like that? Yeah, I can answer some questions, but the other thing I have to tell you is I'm doing a real lecture that's going to go into all my ideas in detail, and I consider my lectures one of my art forms. If I'm, when I'm good at it, I really become hypnotic, so you can see if I do that or not. If you come to uh, Mister, Mister 2000. What? Mister 2000. Mister 2000. Mister 2000. At the Limehouse Cup 92, which is the Rose Cup and uh, Morning's Ball. Uh, it starts at 8 tomorrow. And, and nothing can break because it's just my mouth. So unless I get laryngitis, it'll all work <laughs> as planned. Also, um, does, does uh, anybody from Stein want to make some announcements? Yeah, I can say this is the second in our time machine. Yeah, it's and explain the facts of life. So that was, that was my, my best Allen Ginsberg experience. <laughs> anyway, um, so look, um, what I, I'm going to make the second half that's just acoustic, and I'm going to play some instruments. For those of you who are only interested in technology, um, I, um, I, I will be back to Amsterdam with the big show. I do very elaborate versions with huge computers and very elaborate graphics and stuff sometimes, but this is supposed to be some intimate thing. And, um, uh, so sometime I, I will do more of that here, I promise. Uh, but I'm going to play some more music because I love doing it. Those of you who like Sorry. acoustic music, please come and stay and listen to some more. And I, I'm very, very grateful for you that you all came out. It's really wonderful to see all of you here. And I'm so happy you're interested in this stuff. So thank you. And uh, so we'll declare an intermission now. And then I'll, I'll come back and play some acoustic music afterwards. Thanks.